Hey, um, as we go to the Word this morning, let me, I want to talk to you all, so let me come down here and share from my heart. I just want to share a couple of things. Uh, turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I have been placed here to realize God's purpose for ministry. Turn to your other neighbor and say, other neighbor, I have been placed here to realize God's purpose for ministry. Amen. I believe I shared um, what I'm going to share with a few of you when we had our new members class, but the Lord just pressed it on my heart to kind of share this with the entire congregation. So I want to kind of give you a heart, a piece of what God is laying on my heart. First of all, I wanted to thank all who participated last week in the ministry fair. I think we had about 29 new people sign up to get plugged into ministry. And I don't want you to take that lightly, so I want to reemphasize a little bit about that because it takes us all um, involved for us to be who God would have us to be. So with that said, I am of the belief that um, when God starts a thing, everything that's needed for the entity or thing or individual to realize the vision that God has in store for it is already in place. Does that make sense? So in other words, if I were to quote Miles Moreau, Miles Moreau would say this way, when purpose begin, provision is already provided, right? Here's what that means. God won't ask you to do nothing that he won't resource you to do what he wants done. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times the issue, Pastor Derek, is not so much God's resources, but it's us being obedient to God to do what God wants done. So a lot of us spend the time sitting on the resources as opposed to doing what God would have us to do. The reason I say that is because if you were to check Scripture, I think Scripture is very, very clear in communicating how this works. Here's how Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says it, right? It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is God speaking to Jeremiah when he was announcing, when, when Jeremiah was responding to his call. He said this, before I formed you in the womb, Jeremiah, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations, right? And then later on in Jeremiah's ministry, once he responded to the call, here's Jeremiah saying to the exiles and Israelites when they were about to go in or be released in Jeremiah 29, he says, um, God says this, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, right? Plans to prosper, plans to make you great. Y'all, come on, y'all know the scripture. He, he reiterates to them all the stuff that God says, I know that I have for you. And then if you were go to, to uh, I think it's Psalm chapter 37, here, here is what David says in recommunicating re the same truth. The steps of a good person are, or yeah, y'all know it, y'all know it, y'all know it, are ordered by the Lord, which means that every place that I go, every step that I take, everything that I do, God is in control and God directs my path. So Proverbs then, uh, Solomon in his wisdom, recommunicates the same truth in a different way in the book of Proverbs. Um, he says this, many are the plans of a man's heart, um, he says, um, but it is the Lord's purposes that prevail. Come, y'all know this, right? That, that God has intention. And if you were to check the life of every biblical character, and I'm comfortable in saying Every biblical character, if you were to check the life of all the patriarchs in the Old Testament, you would see that they were created for the purposes of God. You would see that God ordered their steps. You would see that God knew them before he, they were formed in the womb, and their entrance in the earth realm was simply them doing what God wanted them to do. Come on, y'all believe that? It, it, it's like Moses was not here accidentally, right? Joseph was not here accidentally. Abraham was not here accidentally. David was not here accidentally. Come on, y'all notice Joshua was not here accidentally. You are not here yeah, that's where I want to go. You are not here accidentally. God is in control, and God directs, and God orders our steps. So today, what I want to do is I want to walk you through, through three key passages of Scripture to illustrate this point so that this ministry can be who God would have us to be. And that more importantly, my prayer is that you would see yourself as God placing you here to do what he wants done in our midst. So if you can grab your Bible and go with me to the book of Acts. I want to look at uh, three passages of scripture. And the first thing I want you to see coming from the books of Acts is that God placed you at Restoration Christian Fellowship um, because of the unique mission that he gave this ministry. He placed you here, number one, because of the unique mission that he gave this ministry. 
So if you go to Acts, jump down to verse 7, chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And then I want you to go specifically to verse 22. Uh, well, jump to verse 24. I'll, I'll fast forward this a little bit and explain some things. And then Wednesday night, we're going to take some time really conversing and dialoguing around this. If you're in Acts chapter 17, say amen. amen. And jump down to verse 24. And notice what verse 24 says. It says, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything and has made from one man, come on, say one man, one man. every nation of mankind to live on, it, on all the face of the earth and having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, and I love verse 27, that they should seek God and perhaps feel they were towards him and find him, yet he is actually not far from each one of us. He's right there. Amen? I just want to talk to you this morning. So, so here's what's happening here in Acts chapter 17, and this is a foundational scripture for when I get to Corinthians. Paul found himself in Athens, and he found himself at the Areopagus, and he's talking to these Greek philosophers or Greek community leaders, and when he goes there, you all notice, he sees all these shrines, and at every shrine, being that they were a polytheistic nation, meaning they worshiped many gods, they had a name for all the gods that they were worshiping on these shrines that were set up there in the Areopagus. But then Paul, as he's going around doing a site visit, he notices that one of the shrines has a name on it that on the shrine that inscribed, that had the inscription, to the unknown God, right? And so what Paul decides to do is he now decides to take the liberty to explain to these individuals who this individual is that they're identifying or referring to as the unknown God, right? So he begins his conversation, and in the beginning of his conversation, here's what he says, um, that the human race is one on account of his organs. So let me explain that. So here's what he says, verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, he does not live in temples, nor is he served by hands as though he needed anything. And then watch it says in verse uh, 26. And he has made one man, from one man, every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth. Right? So here's the point I want you to get real quick. When God started all of this, God didn't say, let me make this person, then this person, then this person. Well, let me say it differently. Let me not make this ethnicity, then this ethnicity, then this ethnicity, then this ethnicity. Paul says, it all began with one person. Oh, come on, say amen. Amen. I like that. I want you all to get this truth because the problem with us as a body of believers, we've gotten to the place where the church has become so segregated that, that the 11 o'clock hour, you've heard this, I think it's MLK who said this, has become the most segregated time because now we've got black church and white church and Asian church and Hispanic church and, all, and the people of God can't seem to come together. Are you hearing me? Because we've forgotten the truth that we all came from one place. I love this scripture. I don't know how you got white people out of black people, but, but, but something happened. You kind of get what I'm saying? Or how you got Asians out of Mexicans, how all that happened. But when I read the text, the text is pretty clear that all God made, and you know Genesis, Adam and Eve, and from there we all spread. Does this make sense? Right? So say one God created one people. Very, very important that you not miss this. So when God looks at us, when God looks on the face of the earth, he doesn't see what we see. He sees his people. I wish I had somebody... He sees people, right? He sees people. So Paul wants one of the Athenians to realize, very, very important, that we all came from one place. Now, here's the second truth in the text that I want you not miss. So that it was created by God, and it says it was created to inhabit all the earth in all of its diversity. Let me say that a different way. He created one man, and then he determined where they should live. Or where they should inhabit the earth. This is going to make sense in a little while to you, right? Look at this. He made from one man, verse 26, 
every nation or ethnos and kind to live on the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. And, and I wish I had a different translation, but it, some of the translation says this. He allotted seasons and he allotted times. Okay? Um, and the boundaries of their dwelling place. So here's what that means. That there's a time where God will have you living in Chicago. And then listen to this. When that season is up. God will move you and relocate you to Denver. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're one of them. Yeah, you get it. You kind of get what I'm saying? There, there's a time if he determines where you should live. Because remember, it wasn't, I love this, it wasn't Abraham that says, I'm going to leave my place and go to Canaan. I believe it was God that came to him. Yeah, Abraham, come y'all got and say, hey, leave your home and go to the place where I'm going to show you. Now, whether you want to accept the truth or not, you might not be as in tune with God as Abraham is, such that you're disciplined enough to recognize his voice, but the unction that you got to relocate to where you are right now, don't make the mistake into thinking you thought up the idea. <laughs> don't be little God like that. Act says he determines. You kind of get where I'm going? So I'm here because God wants me here. You're here because God wants you here, right? I can go further with the application. The same is true with our ministry, places of ministry, or churches that we previously belonged to. The reason you left, the circumstances, the situation, all that stuff that happened, don't make the mistake into thinking that you got tired and you left. God said, hey, hey, this season is up. And you might not have loved the circumstances around the seasons, but God did it. I was sharing this a few weeks ago. If you get caught up on the fact that Joseph's brother put him in a pit and sold him into slavery, and you get mad with the brothers, you will miss the move of God when Joseph made it to the throne in Egypt. Because that circumstance was the catalytic event that propelled him out of where he was to be who God would have him to be, okay? The reason you are where you are is God creates things. God directs. God orders. Come on, we just showed you all that in scriptures. He sets everything up so we can be where he ultimately wants us to be. Does this make sense? Okay, now here's the thing. God is not a, a crazy scientist. The reason he does this, the reason he does this, right, his intention in place, placing people where they are is so that they may seek God and find him. So let me say it this way. Felix is not in Denver, Colorado for Felix's benefit or for Felix's sake. Somebody in Colorado needs to hear the word of the Lord or the voice of God, and God wants to use me as a vehicle to tell people about Jesus so they can find him. Don't, don't make this about me. Call, put your name where Felix was. Thomas is here. God moved him from Baltimore and brought him all the way to Denver, not for Thomas's benefit, because God needs somebody at the VA to hear the voice of the Lord through Thomas. I wish I had somebody in here so God relocates him here. See, the problem is we've been saved too long, and we forget all the nuances of God working behind the scenes. So he places you where he has you, right? So that somebody can have an encounter with him through you at the place that he has you at the time that he has you there. Does this make sense? Repeat after me. Say, self, God placed me here to fulfill the purpose that he has for this ministry. I know I'm moving fast, but I want you all to get this, okay? So the second thing I want you to understand is that if God placed you here, you play a critical role in this ministry realizing its vision and mission in the community. I need at least two amens. I'm going to help you all with that in a little while, okay? Because here's the thing. God, God, didn't, God didn't just send Felix to Denver or send Derek to Kaiser or send John to uh, from, where you come from, dude? Ohio somewhere? People live in Ohio? Yeah. From Ohio to the military to Tucson. I'm sorry, Ohio people. And then Denver. And, and God didn't send here just so John could get rich and comfortable and all that stuff. There's blessings when we obey God, but God's mission is first. You guys are with me? 
especially if you know the name of the Lord, right? He directs the steps. He orders our steps. Um, he guides our path so we can be who he would have us to be. So I'm going to say this up front. You might as well accept the assignment. Might as well accept the assignment, okay? So let me give you, let me go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at this, and then I'm going to move as quick as I can. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and jump down to verse, um, where I want to go, what verse is that up there? Yeah, 12. Look at verse 12. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want you to take everything that I've said, and I want you to condense it now down from not only location and places, but I want you to connect this now to the body. Say amen if you're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me just read and then I will illustrate and explain. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one, I'm in the ESV, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but what? Many. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? I love this next verse. But as it is, God has arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. I'm going to read that again because this is paramount. But as it is in verse 18, God has arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. And look at the next verse. If all, if all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet what? Okay, come on, say one body. Let me, let me see how um, I can illustrate this best with you. I want to give you a good feel of this. I thank God that he made me the way he did, right? And here's the beauty of what God did. He decided that um, as a person, I should have two hands. I should have two feet. I should have two eyes. I should have two ears. I should have a nostrils with two openings. I should have one mouth and, bless the Lord, one head. You kind of get what I'm saying. Now, the beauty of what I just shared with you is that um, God by himself made the decision that my arms should be attached to my shoulder and my feet should be attached to my lower torso. You kind of get what I'm saying? And he placed the eyes in the right place and he placed the ears in the right place and he placed the mouth in the right place. So here's what you say, and, and let me back up. And we've all accepted the truth that the human beings God made, God arranged, and God created it the way he wanted it to be. So here's what we say. Whenever we see a person with a member of their body located in a place where God did not place it, here's what we say. They're deformed. Amen. Thank you, right? We do say that. Some things out of place, right? Because if you see a person, um, and, and here's the other thing we say, if, if we see a person with one leg and they're only walking on one leg and they have to use crutches to walk or a wheelchair, here's what we say. We don't use the, warm, the, the word deformed. We say handicap. Why do we say that? Because we'll say something is what? Missing. Yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it. Now, let me connect that to the church. There is a church universal, and then there is a church local, right? And if you look at the church universal, here's what that scripture is telling me. Here's my introduction. Every body part that the universal need, church needs to do what God wants it to do, based on where he placed each church, everything is there. Because my God doesn't create the formed individuals. I wish I had somebody in here. God doesn't create. Uh, yeah, you kind of get what I'm saying? He's a perfect God. He, he, he knows how to create things. Any things that's deformed or messed up is the result of sin or some abnormality. Don't blame. Uh, come on, are you tracking with me? Are you tracking? So here's where I'm going with this. In the local church then, the same is true. As a body, 
everything the local church needs to accomplish what God wants to do in the local church is already there. And I love verse 18. Is it verse 18? It says here in verse 18 that, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, just as he chose. Some of y'all are still lost. I, I, I need, I need, I need, I need, I can't pick on you now. Come on, yeah, come on, come on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. You're going to tell you, I ain't coming back to church no more. Yeah. I need you right up here, bro, right there. Yeah, you got to get up on that platform. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, that's what you get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need him. Um, Ma- Matthews, let me get you. I'll put you on this side. Back up a little, back up a little. I'll put you on that side. Just stand, stand over there. We're in that corner. Okay, let me get somebody from over here. Tyfini, Tiffany, come on. I'm going to use you. We got to mix it up because somebody's going to say, he ain't used no women in his illustration. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> I know how to do it. So let me have you stand right there, okay? Cool, cool. I'll, I'll make it up to you, okay? So, so I want you to see three bodies. You kind of get what I'm saying? But I want you to visualize them just as a body Visualize them absent head, absent legs, absent arms. Just visualize a torso with me, right? And I'm going to put names to these bodies just for the sake of the illustration, all right? So I'm going to name you Heritage Christian Center, all right? All right? And I'm going to name that body the Potter's House Denver. Is that all right? Is that time we'll make it up? Your restoration. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I want you to see this very important. So here's what happens. Here's what happens. God, now I need, I need some more people. Give me some choir people. Give me the, the three of y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need y'all to stand around. What are you, Potter's House? Yeah, you stand around Potter's House. Come on, girl, come on. Yeah, you got a basketball shirt. Come on, come on, lady. We need some white people up there. Let's mix it up. Yeah, yeah, mix it up. Yeah, yeah. One body, right? One body. You kind of get what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. One body. That's right. One body. All right, let me get some people on this side. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Derek. Y'all come over here. Oh, y'all come, come. This whole section, come. Yeah, come on up. Stand around. Yeah. Stand around him. Stand around him. Stand around him. Stand around him. Right? I want y'all to see this real quick. Yeah, come on. Come on. I need some people in the middle. Come on, Len. Salva. No, y'all stay, y'all stay real quick. Stay. I'm going to call you up real quick. I'm going to use this example. Well, no, come, 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 come. So, so I'm going to. Salva, come on. Come on real quick. Yeah. Let's do this real quick. My time is running out. Y'all hurry up here. Hurry Don't be playing a gentleman now, man. Just going up there. You know you wouldn't normally help her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, get in the middle, yeah. Yeah, good. So, what are you, Potter's House? Right. So, here's Potter's House. And this is the body. And God decides that the body needs an arm. You kind of tracking with me? So, he takes an arm and he sends it and he attaches it to Potter's House. Does this make sense? He decides that Potter's House needs a feet, a foot. Come on. And he takes a foot and he attaches it. To Potter's house. I need another person real quick. I need uh, Karen come. And he takes another arm and he attaches it. And he takes a feet and he a foot, <laughs> yeah, and he attaches it. Okay? You kind of get what I'm saying. But I need you to stand back here, Pastor Karen, right? All right. So so everything that the body needs, he attaches it to the body to make sure that the body is functioned. So you're in the body here, and then he puts a head. You kind of get what I'm saying? I think uh, a head in the body. So then he goes over here to Heritage and he does the same thing. He says, Heritage needs an uh, arm, so he takes an arm and he attaches it to the right place. Heritage needs a feet, foot, he takes a foot, he attaches it to the right place. I need another person. Come on, Clay. You, you, are you going to be able to make it? All right. Come on, security. Come on. Just come, but keep watching. Okay, that's what I learned about security. Yeah. Yeah, keep watching. Yeah. He needs an arm. He needs a foot. I need you to stand back there. Right? Yeah, make sure you can see everybody so nobody, yeah, okay? And then we have the body. You kind of get what I'm saying, okay? Then he comes to Restoration Christian Fellowship. And he says the same thing. This body has to be whole. And he says here that he has an arm, and then it has, come on, a foot. It's kind of messed up right now because it has, dude, let me move you. Quit trying to play strong, yeah. Then um, a foot and an arm, but it's missing an arm, and it's missing a leg. Acts chapter 17. God determines places and seasons where people should live, right? You kind of get what I'm saying. So he realizes that restoration only has one arm and one leg. So he goes, what church you come from? <laughs> Rock, church. Rock Church. And he borrows a leg. He ends the season at Rock Church. Yeah. 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 He determines seasons and places, right? 
And then he brings, what are you, a leg? And he places the leg so restoration can have two legs. You kind of get where I'm going? And then he goes to, um, what church did you come from? Potter's house? Is that you come? And he says, we need another, what you, what's missing over here? An arm? He ends that season. Y'all getting this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, y'all. He ends, he ends that season, right? And then he brings the person. And then he says, see, Len, if you can help a lady, this is how you do it. All right. This is how you do it. Yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then you put it there. You kind of get, get what I'm saying? You get where it's going? So the body can be whole. But then he noticed over here that Potter's house has an extra leg. And he ends the season because it's just sitting in the pew not doing anything. <laughs> and so he takes it and he moves it over here. And he says, here, now you got two legs and you got a good head and you can work right. You can't, yeah, y'all get it? Y'all get it? Get it? Yeah. Then he goes over to Heritage and he, he notices, notices that there's another leg here that's just sitting nothing and there needs security over at restoration. So he takes, he ends the season, he ends the season, and then he moves it because that's what he does, right? And then he sits back and he looks at his churches. He looks at Potter's House. He looks at Heritage. And he looks at RCF and he says, yeah, that's it. They got everything. Y'all kind of get what I'm saying? They got everything now that they need to do what I want them to do because I won't start something unless I provide all the resources. You kind of get where I'm going? To do what, yeah, come on, is this making sense? To do what needs to be done, right? And so he makes sure there's two legs and there's two shoulders and there's two eyes and there's two ears. You kind of get what I'm saying? And he makes sure there's one head, bless the Lord, yeah, and one mouth and all that good stuff. And he does this for his body, his body. So he makes sure heritage has the same thing. He makes sure restoration has the same thing. He makes sure the potter's house had the same thing. And if I could name every Every church in Denver, I would line them all up and I would show you how every church in Denver has every single thing that it needs so the body is not handicapped, so the body is not dysfunction, so the body is not retarded, so the body is not incapacitated because that's not the kind of God that I serve. Are you hearing me? And Corinthians says, because he made from one man, and Acts, I mean, Acts 17 says, from one man, all nations of people, and he determined where they should be, just like he told Abraham, leave your place and go. He told you, leave where you are to come where he has you. And the reason he sent you is because you're a body part. You're a body part. Are you hearing me? You're a body part and you belong. Here's what does not happen. You never see, come Miss Facebook right all over the place. Yeah, poster. Yeah. You don't see arms floating in the air without being connected. If you ever see that, it's going to rot and it's going to die because it's not connected to the blood source. So for folk that be going, ah, well, I don't need no church. It's just me and God. You might want to check your theology a little bit. Are you with me? Even Abraham was connected to a family. You get it? We were all made to connect because the body is intended to do something unique in the place where God has positioned it. Does this make sense, people? Are you with me? So I don't have an arm that's dysfunctional, nor do I have a leg, nor do I have a head or an arm or, or any part of my body that's dysfunctional. God made me the way he made me and named me the way he named me and positioned me the place that he positioned me for his purposes to accomplish what God wants done. Does this make sense? Okay? So here's, here's how I want to culminate this. I'm going to pick this up next week. I want you all to get this very, very important. The seat that you're sitting in. You might want to check to see if you're a leg that's sitting on a butt that you don't have. Because legs aren't designed to sit. Oh, y'all don't. Y'all stay holy, stay holy, stay holy. But you get it with me? Or make sure you might be an arm that's sitting in the pew and you ain't picking nothing up. 
or an ear that's sitting in the pew but it's not listening. Or a mouth that's sitting in the pew but it's not talking. Or an eye but it's not seeing. Because here's what's happening. If you're a, what's the right word? A misused, ill-used, non-used body part, here's what you're doing. You're making the body either retarded or handicapped. Come on, y'all. And if restoration ain't realizing its vision, don't look at me, don't look at Derek, don't look at Brenda, don't look at the elders, don't look at the ministries. Say, which part am I and why am I not in the game? When God sent you, when God positioned you, when God placed you. Because everything we need, does this make sense? Corinthians chapter 12. And I love this. And God has arranged them the way he wanted them to be. Okay? So, 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 um, um, your heritage. Pastor Leonard didn't of his own volition say, I want to start a church. You kind of get what I'm saying? It was God who decided, I need to get this brother here in Denver, and I'm going to call him to plant a church. And then God starts sending, oh, I'm sorry, you can come back here. Yeah, you done died by now out there, girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he has arranged the body parts. You kind of get where I'm going? Pastor Felix. Uh, yeah, Pastor Felix, how you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, ours, yeah. Didn't decide he wanted to start a church by himself. You kind of get what I'm saying? God placed the call on his heart. Does that make sense? And then brought him. Yeah, does this make sense? Yes. I think it was Pastor Leonard who started Potter's House. Took it by Pastor Chris, right? Same thing. He didn't do that on his own. You get where I'm going? God placed the word, and God sent the body parts. God sent the, I wish I had somebody in here. He sent the body parts so the church can realize its mission and vision. There's work to do. I'm going to pause here, and we we'll pick this up next week. There's work to do. And I want you to see how God loved you so much. <laughs> yeah. I want you to see how God cared about you so much. That he took the time out of the mega millions of people on the face of the earth to come to you and say, Norma, baby, I love you. And I'm going to have to move you from Panama. And I'm going to have to take you to Georgia for a little while. But don't get comfortable in Georgia, baby, because I need you to come to Colorado just for a little bit, all right? But when you come to Colorado, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you in this body so you can cook sweet potato pies for that pastor. You're kind of get. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't do that just so, I, I'm just going to send you to that church so you can get word and worship. That's not what we saw in Acts. He sends you because the community needs to hear from him and he wants to use us as mouthpieces. Does this make sense? Come on, show these people some love. Thank you all so much for, thank you so much for gracing me with that. I'll pick this up next week because I wanted to go to the next place of gifts that God has given you. But it's very, very important that we realize that there's a season where God is causing a shifting in ministries and in churches. And people will say to you that if you look at trends and if you look at um, data and statistics, the church is dwindling. And I, I would say the church is dwindling because people aren't realizing the purpose for the church. They're not realizing who they are and why Christ called them and why Christ uniquely shaped and gifted them. So I want to wake us up. I've been praying for revival. I'm praying for something new to happen here in our midst. And we need to see how we belong to God. And when the mouthpieces of God and the feet of God and the hands of God and the ears of God start doing what God wants done, watch out, Aurora. Watch out, world. Are you hearing me? Watch out, devil. Because the people of God, the flame has been rekindled. Bow your heads with me. Come on, worship team. Come on, Pastor K. Father, you're wonderful. As your word has gone forth, God, I'm praying that if there's one here that have heard your word. And they're saying, man, I didn't see it like that. And they're here and they don't know you as Lord and Savior. May God, you bring them to a place where they say, I want to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. Beginning there. 
And if they're here and maybe they've strained away and like the illustration with Loyola, there's this arm out here by itself and they're saying, I need to connect to the body. God, draw them. This is what you mean when you say in Scripture, the harvest is ripe, but the labor is a few. The problem is not the harvest, it's the labor is God. So if one needs to rededicate their life, draw them, God. If one says, I want to be a part of this house because I see that God has me here and I've been not involved, I want to connect. Draw them, God. Draw them. But most of all, God, those of us that know you, forgive us for missing. Forgive us for not being all that you would have us to be. Forgive us, God, for becoming complacent. Forgive us for procrastination. Forgive us, God. And we thank you for the forgiveness that you've given us. Now we want to get like the old Baptist song, on the battlefield, working for you. So Holy Spirit, move in this place, God. Draw one. Draw one, God. Draw one. Draw one. Draw two, God. We had 29 people last week sign up to say, I want to be involved in ministry. Let us as a ministry not be guilty of not following up with them to connect them. They said, I belong. So God, we receive them. And so if one don't know you today, bring them. If one needs to rededicate their life, reconnect, bring them. If one wants to say, I want to be a part of this church, bring them, God. If they need prayer, bring them, God. Have your way in our midst. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand to our